In this clip, I will be taking you step by step through how I produce this watercolour painting using this reference image, which I got from Unsplash. You can find the direct link to this image in the description below. I will also talk you through the resources I used and give you hints and tips along the way. So let's get on with the tutorial. So before we start the initial stages of the painting, I'm just going to highlight some areas that I want to mask off the main one being the whiskers and any light hairs so that I can avoid painting over those and having to paint them off on with gouache after I have started painting. So for the background, I'm going to start by applying clean water to the areas other than the cat because I'm only painting the background. I'm going to try and create the blurry background or what photographers call depth of field because I want to then draw the focus towards the kitten so what i'm going to do is i'm adding clean water and then i will add burnt sienna and then pick out details with sepia which is a darker brown and that will enhance the wood effect of the wood grain that is in that depth of field background So now I'm starting to mix some colours to prepare for painting the cat. I'm mixing some colours for the eyes. As I mentioned earlier, I have changed the colour because I wanted to give it more of a focus. So I'm mixing cerulean blue, which is quite a bright light blue. All of the colours that I've used in today's demonstration are on the right hand side. And I am also mixing alizarin crimson and burnt sienna because I will use that for the nose and also I will use alizarin and crimson on its own for the edges of the ears and I will have that quite watered down. Most of the colours I use in the, in the initial stages will be watered down because I'm just blocking in colours. I won't put what I call neat colours or colours directly from the pan directly on. When you're using watercolours you need to start light and then build your colours up darkly or in a darker tones as you gradually move up. It's all about adding layers and a lot of people think that watercolour is easy and it's quite a quick method but actually it takes a lot of time because you're building up layers to give your subject depth. So this first layer is about just putting colours onto the cat. Now also when you are looking at the cat you will notice that there are slight blue tones in the fur and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wash of Prussian blue, which is quite a cold blue, which sounds strange, but there are warm blues. Um, and I'm going to put a wash of Prussian blue for the first layer of the fur. When I move on later, I will start to add Payne's Grey. That is a colour that I use quite a lot, but that is very good for this cap because of obviously the darker markings. And when I add some of those initial markings they will be wet on wet because I want the colours to expand and then in the later stages I will add them wet on dry because I want them to be more detailed. So now I'm going to start adding details to the face. I'm starting with the top half because that obviously joins the background um, and then what I will do is I will start just putting background colours onto the face and doing some wet on a mixture of wet on wet and wet on dry say for example with the ears i'm going to do wet on dry and later i will add um, some details on with the nail brush with white gouache when the areas are dry but that will be in the next stage so now that that first layer of markings on the face um, have tried you can just about make them out I'm going to now add a second layer um, and some of them will be wet on dry some of them will be wet on wet and I will wet down the area on the paper as I move along again this will be in Payne's Grey um, 
as you can see I've also added um, areas around the eyes um, and you can see now those wet areas they are starting to expand and they will soften um, and it's really important that you make those decisions as to the areas that you want to be the softer areas and the more harsher areas and sometimes when it dries you can look at them and think oh you know maybe I should have made those ones a bit more distinct and a bit more defined so what you can do is just wait for them to dry make sure they're completely dry if you're not sure go over it with a hairdryer and then you can go back in and add the layers on with a wet on dry technique So now I'm picking out some fine hairs in the ear with some white gouache. Gouache is opaque which means it will stand out more but also I want to pick out some fine hairs across the cat and in some areas I will water those down and I'm also picking out some clumps of hair around the neck. I will sometimes maybe switch brushes but for the finer hairs I will use this nail brush. As I said these are a really good alternative to a paintbrush. Um, as they are very economical and I've found these to probably be in some cases when I'm painting hair more effective so they're worth giving them a go. paint is dry I'm going to go in with a tissue to rub off all of the masking fluid and if there are any areas that haven't masked off i.e paint has got through then I will go over this with a gel pen a white gel pen To enhance the whiskers further, I go in with a white gel pen, especially if there's any little areas where the paint has gone in. So this is worth doing. You can use the fine detail brush with the gouache, but I find the gel pen sometimes is a lot more useful. If you enjoyed this clip then make sure you check out more clips like this in the watercolour playlist. Don't forget to look in the description below for details of products used in today's clip and if you have any ideas for content or questions leave a comment below. Finally don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content.